guys. Don't worry about me. I'm just, I'm just laying here with a giant elephant on top of me. <sighs> I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. What's that you say? It's only a stuffed elephant? Oh. Okay. Well, if you have any questions for BR Kids about anything that you hear today, have a parent or guardian help you send a message or video to BRKids at BlueRidge.org. What? Now there's a huge gorilla on me too? Oh boy. Well, anyway, make sure you pick up an activity pack. It's got cool stuff to help you go deeper into God's Word this week. You can get one after any live service you attend or by stopping by the New London campus between 12 and 1 p.m. There. I am no longer under the tremendously light weight of those enormous stuffed creatures. So I shall bid you a good day. Snow? It can't be. In summer? Ooh, sugar. Yummy. That's not so bad. As long as it doesn't turn into a blizzard. <laughs> Well, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> See you later. Okay, so someone decided to put the announcement before the anchor starts the show this week. All right, I, I can work with that, I can handle it. It's, it's not a big deal, it's, it's not a big deal. It's... No, why, why, why would they do this? Like we had such a good thing going here, like why? Wow! Hello, and welcome back to Banana News. It's Banana! I'm Kylie, and this is my co-host, Banana the Beta Fish. So today, in this week's episode, we're going to be learning about how when we are under pressure, God is faithful. So God is loyal, He is trustworthy, He is loving, He is faithful, He is kind. And like any relationship, we can choose a relationship with God. And God wants us to have a relationship with Him so, so badly. But just like any relationship, we go through some obstacles. Kind of like this guy. Anybody else think that the chicken was gonna knock down the wall? Maybe a bigger chicken. Okay, a rubber chicken. Not a real one, of course. Mm, I guess we'll never know. So this story kind of makes me think about the true story 
that we're going to be learning about from the Bible today. But before we dive in, let's dive into what we already learned about last week about the Israelites. God's chosen people, the Israelites, were slaves in Egypt for over 400 years. Then God made a way for them to be freed. Moses led them out into the wilderness where God parted the Red Sea and they walked through on dry land. The current generations of Israelites had only ever known life in Egypt, where even though they were slaves, they had what they needed to survive. So, wandering around the desert was hard, really hard. But God showed them that he loved them and would always take care of them. He gave them food when they asked for food, water when they asked for water. He protected them from their enemies and even gave them the Ten Commandments so they would know how to live their lives serving the one true God instead of the false gods of Egypt. God was leading the Israelites to a land he had promised them, but when they arrived, they became afraid of the people that lived there. Almost all the Israelites did not have faith in God's plan. They did not trust that God had everything under control. So God caused them to wander in the desert for 40 more years. So one thing that we need to know about this true story of the Israelites is that the Israelites that have escaped Egypt and the 10 plagues have all passed away. But their children are part of this new generation of Israelites, and God has called upon Joshua to be that leader. See now, Moses was old and about to die, and he was not allowed in the Promised Land. So the Israelites needed a new leader to help them through the Promised Land. God called upon Joshua to be that leader and to lead them through the Promised Land. With God's help through God, the Israelites won in victory in their battles through the cities and the people. Because you know how God has promised to them. We dug up some old footage in our sister site of Jericho on one of the battles that took place there. Let's take a look. Welcome to Jericho Eyewitness News. I'm Cliff Rogers. This just in, a new military strategy or just a bunch of crazies? Let's go live to Jericho with our reporter in the field, Eileen Douglas. Eileen? Thanks, Cliff. That is the question of the day. Could the Israelite army be successful in knocking down the walls of Jericho by simply marching around the city? Or have they all lost their minds? Let's take a look at the scene. Ha! <laughs> Great strategy, guys. What are you gonna do, just keep walking around and make us dizzy? What are you trying to prove? Ha! That's a great idea. What are you gonna do? Come up to our huge front gates and do like a little fancy dancey dance? Like, ooh. Ignore them, men. Remember, you shall not shout or make your voice heard. Neither shall you let any word go out of your mouth until the day I say shout, then you shall shout. This is the leader of the Israelites, Joshua. Joshua, could we have a word? Keep marching, men. I'll be right back. Joshua, I'm Eileen Douglas with Jericho Eyewitness News. Could you please fill us in on exactly what's happening here? Eileen, I'm sure what we're doing may look a little weird, but God came to me and told me that we should take this land, which means we need to destroy every city, including Jericho. We've been marching around these walls for seven days, and a lot of my men think what we are doing is a little ridiculous, but I keep explaining to them how great and how faithful our God is. I know God is with us. In fact, excuse me, in fact, I was standing near Jericho and the commander of God's army came to me and spoke to me and said that the land that I was standing on was holy. It was an amazing worship experience. And it was he who gave me that battle, this battle plan. I know my God is faithful and we need to obey him, so I choose to obey him. Excuse me, I better get back to my men. You heard it here first, folks. Joshua's army has been marching around this wall for seven days, hoping to bring down the walls of Jericho. Looks like there's some more action on top of the wall. Let's see what all the commotion is about. Mm. Seven days you guys been walking around. I bet you guys are real hungry. This watermelon sure is delicious. Mmm. 
These chips are so good. Mm. How long have you guys been walking around anyway? I bet you miss chips. You know, nacho chips, sour cream and onion chips, barbecue chips. Poor confused Israelites. No chips for you. As you can see, with all of this chip taunting, the situation here is really heating up. Uh-oh. Sounds like something's about to happen. Let's take a look. Ooh, yeah! Yeah! Hey, guys, I got an idea. How about we start a band? We can go around with some maracas and some sombreros. You guys would be superb trumpeters. And we can start a little mariachi band! Ooh, yeah! Yeah, because obviously being an army isn't working out for you guys. You know, with your brilliant strategies and all. You know, you should trade in your swords for some more instruments. Yeah! Now's the time for God to display his power! Come on, man, blow your trumpets and shout! God has given you this city! Uh, 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 bro? Is this wall starting to shake? Oh no, that's it. I'm out of here. Forgot my chips. Incredible! The walls are falling and the Israelite army is rushing into the city. Let me see if I can quickly grab someone for reaction. Hey, you there! Can you come here a minute? I know you're really busy, but could you quickly tell me who you are and what you think about everything that's happening? I'm one of the priests from the Israelite army. To be honest, I wasn't sure about all those things Joshua was telling us to do at the beginning. But look what's happened. We priests, we obeyed what he asked us to do by carrying the Ark of the Covenant and by blowing our ram's horns at just the right time. And look what God has done. He brought down the walls of the city so we can go in and claim it. He's been faithful in giving us this land just like he said he would do. Well, I, I gotta go. I gotta get back with the army. Wow, that's incredible. This seemingly crazy tactic given to this army by the God of Israel has worked against all odds. Since God is always faithful, I'm going to work hard at doing a better job of obeying him. You've been watching Jericho Eyewitness News. I'm Eileen Douglas, reporting. Wow, that old news report makes me feel like I was there right in the action. So now let's take some few moments to dive into some more truths about God's Word today. What's up, guys? How you doing? Looking good over there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Y'all doing good? Good. I'm doing good. Okay, hey, when we are under pressure, God is faithful. Did you hear that? Yeah. See, because life is full of pressures, things that make life difficult. And the Israelites felt pressure too. They were afraid to enter the promised land at first. And then once they moved in, they felt the pressure of taking over the land from the people who lived there. But you know what? God had promised that land to them and he had a plan to make it happen. The Israelites, they just needed to choose to obey and trust God. See, here's the thing. God is faithful all the time. He will never let us down, even when we come up against walls or obstacles or tough situations that seem too difficult to get through. But you know what? God wanted the Israelites to always remember something, so he said something through the leader Moses in Deuteronomy 31.6. He said to Israel, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That means that God is faithful to his people. He knows that sometimes we're gonna come up against giants in our lives, maybe giant walls in our lives, but he has a plan for how to teach us and help us to get through them. So is what Moses said in God's word, the Bible true for only Israelites? No way! 
Well, then who else is this truth for? Oh, oh me? And you? That's right, all of us. See, because when we choose to make Jesus the leader and forgiver of our life, then we become a part of God's family. And we can trust that God will always be with us. God's plan was for the Israelites to have victory at Jericho. But Joshua and his army still had a choice to make. They had to choose whether or not to do something that seemed kind of crazy by marching around these walls and shouting, you know, doing that thing, or by doing it in their own way, maybe a way that seemed more normal. But I'm thankful that Joshua was such a good leader who followed God and that the army chose to obey God by obeying the leader God had given them. You know, even though the Israelites weren't perfect, this true story is a really good example of what it looks like to trust that God is faithful and to obey God no matter what, no matter how crazy it seems. And our memory verse that we've been practicing reminds us that we will face difficult things in our lives. But if we trust the unlimited power of God, then he can keep those tough things from destroying us. So let's go ahead and say our memory verse together, okay, you guys? But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 9. If you guys don't have that verse memorized already, then take some time this week to get it into your brain and into your heart because it's such a good one that reminds us that God can get us through anything. And because of that, I wanna take some time to worship him right now. Look, I don't know if you guys have been worshiping him recently or not, Either way, it's always a good time to worship our God because he is faithful and he's awesome and he always deserves our praise. So let's start by singing and dancing and giving God some awesome glory right now. You ready? Let's do it together. Woohoo! Walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you that you may live prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess walk in obedience to all that the lord your god has commanded you that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess walk 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 in obedience Oh, 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 the Lord your God has commanded. Walk, 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 walk in obedience.
knowing what I know now about how God led the Israelites to defeat Jericho, I would have most definitely wanted to be on God's side. Now, would it have felt a little bit weird to walk around one time a day for six days completely silent, and then on the seventh, seventh day, seven times in a row, just shouting and being, uh, blowing trumpets? Probably, but we see that God is faithful and God is always faithful. So let's just take a moment today and thank God for his faithfulness. Father, I just thank you for all that you do for us and all that you continue to do for us. Father, you are so faithful and I thank you for your faithfulness. I pray that our eyes would be open to your faithfulness and to your promises and to your glory, to your works that you do in our lives every single self, every day. Father, we love you so, so, so much. And it is in your son Jesus' mighty, precious name we pray, amen. Sadly, that's all we have time for today on this episode of Banana News. It's Banana! So, from myself, Banana the Beta Fish, and everybody here at BR Kids, we want you to know that we love you God loves you. And we'll see you next time. <gasps> Chips! Banana, you want some? You sure? You sure? Okay.